I'd like to share this with you if you haven't read it. Uh, just going to share a little bit of it here. It's about Trump raising an army. And the question is asked in the article, how, how do you raise an army? You do that by dividing America into tribes and as president, aligning yourself with the most extreme tribe, promoting militarization among the people who support you. How do you raise an army? You do it by worshiping military figures and by talking in militaristic terms. How do you raise an army? You reverse restraints on guns and you cozy up to the police unions and you encourage police to be rough with people that they arrest. You encourage police brutality. How do you raise an army? You resent limits on the militarization of police departments. In other words, giving police departments across the country access to military surplus equipment typically used in warfare as against the Taliban and as against ISIS, including grenade launchers, armored vehicles, and bayonets. These things are going to be available now to police departments across the country. How do you raise an army? By defending armed white nationalists and fascists and Nazis and neo-Nazis and the KKK. How do you raise an army? By defending monuments of Confederates who fought for slavery and by tweeting in coded language. This is a tweet from Donald Trump. Sad to see the history and culture of our great country being ripped apart with the removal of our beautiful statues and monuments. And these, of course, are statues and monuments to Confederate war heroes who fought for slavery. How do you raise an army? By attempting to reduce or marginalize populations that are opposed to you by building a wall, by returning to drug policies that fuel mass incarceration, by banning certain groups of people from coming in, and by curbing even legal immigration. Now, why raise this army? Should something emerge from the Robert Mueller investigation that should implicate Trump and pose a threat to the continuation of his presidency, Trump wants to position any attempt to remove him as a political coup. In other words, he wants to say that any impeachment process is a political coup and his efforts to delegitimize the press are all part of this because one day the press will be the ones who will deliver the news that Trump has been impeached. Trump knows that the oligarchs and the establishment Republicans will be quick to abandon him, but the base, his base, the ones with the guns, the ones who are excited, the ones who are the diehards, the ones that he keeps appealing to and keeps applauding, they will not forsake him because they will see attacks on Trump as attacks on themselves. And we see that now. These Trump supporters so identify with Trump. He is so completely their God, their idol, their Lord and Master, that whatever he does, they are with him. And they identify with him. And any attack on him, they see as an attack on them because they are his people. He's looking for the end scenario here. These diehards that are his future Confederates, if these people should ever come to believe, as Trump will have them to believe, that Trump is being removed from office by a coup, what will they do? What will they do if he is impeached and he refuses to leave? That's the concluding question that this man asked. So this is a very interesting editorial. So Donald Trump is militarizing 
at home. He's raising an army, really. This, this man's hit it on the head. We've not only are we going to see the, the police in this country being militarized more and more, having the weapons of war, weapons of the United States military in the hands of local police departments, infiltrated by KKK members and neo-Nazis and white supremacists. You know, that's no, there's no doubt in my mind that's why we're seeing so much uh, racial profiling going on in the police departments. It's many of the people that are being attacked on the streets now, black people, Asian people, Hispanic people, uh, that are being attacked by the police departments across this country. Many people uh, are brothers and sisters in Christ that are simply being profiled and discriminated against and treated terribly simply because of their race, because of the color of their skin. We recall, you know, the, that the United States of America dropped those bombs, those terrible bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II. You know, if you study that and take a good look at that, the Truman admitted himself that he dropped those bombs because he wanted to minimize any more casualties among his own military. In other words, he was willing to sacrifice the lives of civilians. These were women, children, little babies, tiny little born, newborn babies, and infants, toddlers that were incinerated by those horrible atomic bombs that Truman dropped on Japan because he wanted to minimize the casualties to his own military. In other words, he sacrificed the lives of women, babies, children for the sake of the American military that was fighting against Japan. Now, you may say, well, Japan started that war at Pearl Harbor, so they, they're the ones who started it and America finished it. The United States military was fighting their military, not the women and the babies and the children of Japan. Those little babies had nothing to do with dropping bombs on Pearl Harbor. They had nothing to do with that war, but they were the ones that were incinerated. Why? Because of a racist attitude. You know, I just believe with all my heart that that never would have been done to the people of Berlin or the people of, of any city in Germany, even though we were at war with Germany. And, and I believe, I honestly believe the reason why is because the American people wouldn't have stood for white people in Germany, Caucasians being bombed and, and women and babies and, and toddlers, infants, newborns being incinerated in Berlin. I don't think the American people would have put up with that. And, and I think that's why they didn't do it. They knew that the American people would say, what are you doing? Just, you know, killing all these innocent people. But it was accepted because it was done to Japan, not Germany. It was acceptable to drop those bombs on Japan. The American people could accept that because of an, a racism that was just inherent in the people. The, the people were just looking at the, the Asian people as subhuman. They were not considered as on the same level as the Caucasians of Europe. And I believe that that's why, that it was acceptable to do that to those poor, innocent people. The, like I say, men, women, babies, all the, the citizens, the elderly that were incinerated in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that was done to them cruelly in order to end the war, war quicker. The United States had already won the war and was already on the way to victory. But Truman wanted to cut it short and, and make it a quick end. And so that's why he dropped those bombs and God knows what an evil thing that was to do to those people.
But now we have a president in Trump who is talking about, he just tweeted this just recently. He said, the U.S. has been talking to North Korea and talking is not the answer. You know, talking is not the answer. You, you're, you're saying, in other words, it's talking to people and trying to talk it out, trying to get things settled through talking, through diplomacy. He's saying that's not the answer. Then what does that leave as the answer? What is his answer? You know, uh, we know good and well, they're all, the White House is always going to come out and say, oh, well, we're talking about everything else. You know, oh, we're going to do trade sanctions and blah, blah, blah. They've already, they've already said also that that's not working. So when Trump is saying that talking is not the answer, we know that it's just a matter of time. The North Koreans are on a path. They're saying we are not going to stop. We are going to have nuclear weapons. We are going to build up our military and we're going to be able to fight a nuclear war against anybody. They know the same thing that China knew years ago. I can remember very well that Taiwan was considered China by the United States back when I was a little boy. Taiwan was a member of the United Nations, not the People's Republic of China. And Taiwan, in the course of my young life, Taiwan was finally kicked out of the UN and the People's Republic of China was allowed to come into the UN. And why did that happen? Simply because China became a nuclear power and they had the power and the might and the United States had to accept that. Well, that's the way the North, North Koreans are looking at this situation. They want to have the power and the might and the influence in this world like other nuclear nations, and they're not going to stop. They're not going to they're not going to change course. They want to be a powerful military power that is respected by the world. And the United States is saying we're not going to let that happen. Donald Trump is saying he's not going to let that happen. And he's saying that talking is not the answer. So it looks to me like he's got a military solution in mind. And brothers and sisters, this is going to mean a terrible, terrible war is going to be fought in the Korean Peninsula and the people of South Korea are going to suffer and the people of North Korea are going to suffer and the people of Japan may well also get involved. It may involve and bring in China. God only knows who all is going to be involved in this, this great Asian war that looks to me like it is coming and is in, inevitable. And I just want to say to anybody, you know, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, anyone in that area, and Russia also borders uh, a part of North Korea. I, I just want to encourage you to look to God and pray and make sure you're at peace with the Lord. Whatever happens, you know, lives could be snuffed out in a moment. And uh, I, do, I do not doubt that Donald Trump being the racist that he is and the way he looks at people, no doubt he has that same mindset that they had in World War II, you know, that uh, let the bombs fall, you know, they're going to fall on Asians. He looks at things in terms of uh, that he is superior and that he is better. And so he's, I don't think he's going to hesitate to let the bombs fall. Now, we've been going through the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark, and I want to talk a little bit about this here and how this relates to what's happening in the world. You know, we were talking about how Jesus got apart and, and prayed to the Father and had communion with the Father. And then he comes back and he says to the disciples, let us go somewhere else from here to the nearby villages around here, so that I can preach there also. For that is why I have come. And so he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. Jesus is all about spreading his gospel, bringing people into the kingdom of God, bringing people from out of 
turmoil and wars and strife and sin and evil and bringing them into his kingdom of love and peace and joy. This is what it's all about, being a follower of Jesus Christ. You know, we're, we're working our way through the book of Mark, and when we get to the final verse of the book of Mark, here's what it says. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. So in other words, the what, what it's all about is spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost world. That is what we as Christians are all about. That is not what the followers of Donald Trump are all about. That is not what the people calling themselves Christians and that are following Donald Trump, that is not what they are all about. They are not about spreading the gospel and bringing people into the kingdom of heaven. They are all about making America great again. It's all about we want to make our world, this world, better again. We want to get, we want to transform this world back into the world that it was in the 1950s when we were all happy and when we were all, and the whites had the supremacy over the blacks and, and everything was the way it sh the world was, in other words, the way they think that it should be. And a world of, of racism where racism is, is the order of the day and before the Civil Rights Act was ever passed and when people were segregated and schools were segregated and, and there, was, there, was a, there was an attitude and a mindset where people uh, were racist and it was acceptable. It was accepted. It was the norm, you could say, the norm of society. When they say, let's make America great again, they mean let's make America a white supremacist country again like it, it was back in the 1950s. What a contrast it is between where the Trump, these so-called Trump Christians, people that call themselves Christians, where they want to take this world and where Jesus Christ wants you to go. Jesus Christ wants you to go to heaven. Jesus Christ wants you to come out of this world. The Bible says, be separate from the world. Don't be a part of the world. But these so-called Christians that follow Trump, what they want is to say to you, be a part of this world. Let's take control of our world again. Let's get America back into our hands again. Let's let's make it what it ought to be again. Let's have this let's have this world uh, that is uh, a world where we're keeping the 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 uh, other people out, keeping other people down, and where we the real Americans, the white people have the supremacy and everything is is as it should be in our world you know that's that's what they're saying and that's what they want you know what a shame because jesus said here is your great commission jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel these people that are saying make america great again are all about this world their lives in this world they're all about bringing this world down into a world of hate, of prejudice, of racism, a, a, a world lacking in love and understanding and compassion. And they're wearing the wrong hat, you know. They're wearing a hat saying, make America great again. Here's the hat that they need to be wearing right here. See this hat, it says, Jesus, one way, the only way. John 14, 6, I love Jesus. <laughs> This is the hat that they need to be wearing. If you're a Christian, get rid of your old Make America Great Again hat and put on, put on the right hat. Wear the right hat. Have the right heart. Have the right mind. Have the right hat on your head. And praise God. Love the Lord with all your heart. Give your heart to Jesus. And let's, let's not try to save this world and, and, and make, make this world great again for ourselves. Let's try to do what God tells us to do. Let's try to reach out. Jesus went out to all the villages all throughout Galilee, and he said to his disciples, go into all the world and take the gospel and make disciples of all nations. If every true born-again Christian was investing their time 
and their strength and their energy and their heart and their mind into fulfilling the Great Commission instead of trying to play politics and be all about voting and, and, and making America great again and trying to make this world a better place. Knowing good and well, Jesus said that it's not going to be a better place until he comes back. If we were just focused on his kingdom instead of our own little world down here on earth and trying to bring people into God's kingdom and get people into heaven, if we were busy doing that, the Great Commission would have been fulfilled a long, long time ago. But it's not been fulfilled. There's a world of people out there right now that have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. They have not understood the true gospel of Jesus Christ because we who call ourselves Christians have been all about our idols and all about this world instead of being about Jesus' business, the work of God.